words. <laughs> okay, guys. So uh, thank you very much for your attention, and thank you guys from uh, Chaos Group and <laughs> uh, Render Legion, or <laughs> I don't know. We will learn soon how to address you guys for this short Q and A. I am pretty sure that there will be a lot of questions from you guys here in the public. We're also collecting questions from the internet. I'll try to check my uh, Facebook feed to see if some questions are coming from outside. Let's just start this uh, very quick Q&A. Thank you guys for being here. Let's give them an applause. Come on. <laughs> so unfortunately, I only have one mic. So can I ask one of my volunteers to come up here and just bring the mic around where needed? Thank you, Mara. Okay, so let's go with the first question. Does anybody have a question? <laughs> this guy in front here. Uh, hello. Uh, I have uh, one question. Uh, that I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, could you present yourself? Yes, yeah, your sure. Name I'm Javier from? Gonzalez from Berga Gonzalez, Barcelona. Thank you. I'm uh, Abba. Uh, I'll explain you later. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Now, uh, first thing that popped to my mind when I heard your joining is that competence is over, and uh, that's a bad uh, no, uh, competition. Competition is over, and it's. it's <laughs> 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 and that was a bad, uh, bad news for us. But then I thought, okay, these guys own the ArcBit uh, industry. They are the main uh, uh, rendering giant. They, 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 they are, they, they, you got it. So my concern is, what's your next step? What industry are you taking over? <laughs> no, me, in, in the sense that if you own Arcbeth, if you focus just, just OK, that's it. OK, got it. Thanks. Can I answer that? Yeah. Uh, OK, so first, uh, have you seen? the results when you type rendering software, what comes out in Google? Okay, I appreciate that you think that the competition is over, but it's not. There's a lot more rendering engines out there that you can actually think of. Uh, last time we were counting, Vado, what was 130? Was the number that came out in the last 20 years? We did that research. 130 is the number of rendering engines out there you can actually use. So no, competition is not over. Uh, fact of the matter is, as I was saying yesterday, is that uh, we, are we are joining BrainForce to actually uh, bring out the best we can on both sides and in both the products. That's my short answer to that. But no, competition is not over. Trust me, we'll have a lot of sleepless nights. <laughs> hey guys, I'm Alex from uh, I'm Alex from Romania. I run a render farm and I'm using both Vue and uh, Corona. I want to congratulate you for the marriage. Uh, I think it will be a, a great <laughs> <laughs> Five guys on stage, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so my question is what will happen with the licensing uh, for render farm? I, I care for my point of view. I will pay, I still pay for Corona and Vue or it will be like a... No, think, a about, think about it in a different way. It's not about Corona or Vue, it's about how does the rendering industry change in general in terms of cloud rendering and render farm services? It's not, uh, if, if anything changes, it's not going to be because of this marriage, thank you. <laughs> uh, it's going to be because of the way the cloud services are now available for everyone to use. And that's actually the main factor for the change in the render farm business as well. It's not the marriage, it's the way the five, six, seven major providers of cloud services actually go are changing the industry. So my question is uh, if uh, it will be still different uh, licenses for like V-Ray and Corona, like? Of course, yeah. yeah. It's, it's one thing to use it on your laptop, it's a completely different thing to provide it as a rendering service to the crowds. I see, okay. Yeah, it's, it's still gonna be different. All right, thank you. Uh, hey guys, Stefan, Faton Studio, Slovakia and Greece. Uh, yesterday you mentioned that uh, 
you want to keep both products, but is this, um, you know, doesn't make sense. Logically, wouldn't it be better to to put it together and make it really the best out of the both? You know, no. I mean, <laughs> it's just a question, like, you know, logically, it would, to be honest, probably make sense. Are you familiar with 3ds Max? Uh, kind of. Are okay. you familiar with Maya? Yeah, kind of. So would it make sense to actually combine them both and make one product? N I don't think it's exactly the same case, is it? It's pretty much I the same case. There's uh, two different approaches. Yeah, sorry, Andre, yeah. Yeah, so there's of course the real world examples of, um, you know, uh, 3ds Max and Maya living under one in one marriage. Yeah. Or uh, different car manufacturers actually being in concerns and so on. I can answer on the technical part, which is the merging like the C Rona or D Rona or whatever the name was for of. It's um, actually merging the two renderers would be uh, technically too hard to do. Yeah. So it doesn't make sense to do technically. And it also doesn't make sense to do from the point of view of the user because there's always the issue of the, uh, basically the user interface. Yeah. So <coughs> because we are, there are people with different preferences and um, different needs and different workflows. Yeah. And uh, we both been trying to target the entire audience and it didn't work. It was uh, not possible for us to target uh, the people who want the maximum flexibility and the chaos group uh, guys had problems targeting the people on the entry level or who just want to have autopilot for everything. Yeah. So it doesn't even make sense uh, like it is to combine it because you would still end up with some product which everybody can use it, but it, it doesn't really excel in any specific field. Yeah, I just was asking mainly because I know quite many people that would appreciate many features from one, you know, and yeah, also from is, the other side. So I guess if, if it stay this way, it's also quite, quite decent solution, so yeah. We are actually transferring the IP, but it's it's yeah. not like uh, just uh, copying all the files together and yeah, creating <laughs> no, <laughs> some, I mean, yeah. some block. It's, uh, it's <laughs> picking specific uh, solutions to specific problems and porting them from one renderer to the another one while respecting the UI and uh, the general, general target audience and so on. Okay, satisfactory, thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Hello from Blooms. Uh, the question for Corona guys, probably or for entire group: Will we see GPU-powered Corona <laughs> render? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> you, you can okay. take it. You can take it. <laughs> okay. So, um, well, uh, <laughs> 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 this is a this is a tough one, uh, but. Um, I think since uh, since there's uh, already a GPU GPU solution in the company, seems like uh, it might be um, a good strategy to to get the best bits of, of Corona into that one and uh, see where it goes or not. And this is uh, this is a decision that needs to be taken. Okay, so there's now that we have access to all this technology, we can we can choose a way, and there hasn't been a discussion. You know, this whole thing is very fresh, so we didn't even have a discussion internally about um, where will we go in that direction. And um, the good thing is that uh, that the technology is available, right? So, uh, so we have some nice nice bits in Corona in terms of um, of algorithms. There's some nice bits in uh, in V-Ray in terms of the GPU technology. And we can put it together in one way or another and um, stamp it with with um, some name. And um, but of course the um, the end result is that we want to produce something that will work best for for you guys, right? So uh, uh, whichever way we will take uh, to achieve that, uh, it's yet to be uh, yet to be decided. Yeah. Can Thank I you. Can I add something? Sorry. Um, one of the first questions we got uh, yesterday and was actually probably one of the best questions is, is now the whole exporting important thing between the two rendering engines gonna be easier and fully supported? The answer is no. Uh, actually, what we're gonna do is we're gonna have native support in both rendering engines, reading the data from the other rendering engine and we're gonna work on this in the, in the next few months and that's gonna be one of our main focuses. That being said, whether we decide to go on with uh, a Corona GPU accelerated version or not, 
this is going to be a decision we, we need, still need to make. However, if the very RTGPU reads native Corona data and throws it on the GPU, wouldn't that work? Yeah. <laughs> so we're going to definitely work on that, and whether we're going to have a Corona GPU version, that's still to be decided. Thanks. No questions, so many people, no yep. questions. You Question figured, for me. You figured <laughs> it out. <laughs> Hi, I'm, I'm Paul from Factory 15. Um, I had a question which was linked to the competition aspect. I can totally understand your position of there's multiple rendering engines out there and there's bigger fish to compete against. Mm -hmm. I can buy that. What I struggle to, to understand a little bit is the, the relationship internally if one, renderer, one, one rendering engine progresses faster than the other one. So if you have this kind of um, you know, both rendering engines kind of competing, but and you're kind of, um, what if all of a sudden rend uh, overnight Corona renders 10 times faster than V-Ray? That's not gonna be in the interest of the other ed rendering engine. Y it might kind of, you might want them to develop at the same rate. So what, what do you do in that instance of um, kind of internal development of both rendering engines? Because it, it, from the outside perspective, it seems like it's in the interest for them both to develop together at the same rate rather than one more naturally developing faster than the other, if that makes sense. Yeah, it's a valid question, and there is a very really sim just super simple answer, and that's if one of the teams has a breakthrough, they share it with the other team. That's really it. This is the thing we are. But is it that is it that is it that applicable within the within the software to be able to do uh, that? If it is, then we will share it, and we already had this kind of breakthrough of. Uh, using the V-Ray DMC sampler, which makes Corona two times faster. So this already happened. It will happen again with the 2D displacement, for example. People were asking us for better displacement for a long time, and now we can just uh, apply what, what V-Ray has into Corona. And uh, there are other topics, like the dome sampling that goes the other direction. So, so really the answer is, if one of the teams progresses faster than the other team, they can share, share the knowledge or they can um, transfer the IP basically instantly. Yeah, and put it shortly, everybody enjoys it, whether they use one product or the other. That's the purpose of being one company, one team. It's like whatever breakthrough is out there, we actually are going to enjoy. You guys are going to enjoy it in both products. So actually, I, I don't... I don't see a problem with both engines progressing, whether it's it's the same speed or one is faster than the other, it's not that important. What's important is we're not gonna hold any engine back. So if for whatever reason we have problems getting something in V-Ray, that, that's fine. Uh, and Corona becomes better, that's also fine. And that's the point of the whole exercise, right? But And the goal is that we can be better maybe in different areas, and that's also fine. Um, it's not our goal to hold any kind of development back from users. All the cool. teams have complete freedom to research and develop, so everything is just, everybody wins. It's a win-win situation. It's very difficult for me to put it in a different way, but it is. I, I, I mean, one thing that I wanna say is that it's, um, I mean, on the outside, you see features uh, implemented in the render but actually what happens uh, behind all this is, is a lot of trial and error. And so the final implementation mi might be just, you know, kind of like the top of the iceberg of all the work that actually got into exploring the different ways of actually getting that thing done. And of course, this tip of the iceberg needs to be done on both fronts. You need to implement it into one render and you also need to implement it into the double render. So there's, you could say that there's a, some effort that is being profit. But all of this work behind it, you know, all of this work that had to be done in order to, to achieve that feature, this is something that we can actually save and share between the two renders, right? And that, that is exactly what we want to do. Will Corona be a light version of V-Ray? Uh, my question would be, why do you think it should become the light version now? 
because you know we were never trying to do the light version of any render and suddenly why we should go that direction why we should try to replicate uh, V-Ray and make a light version of it well for me uh, it, this question does not make any, any sense well I think I, I think the, the question really is what does it mean that it's light right I mean is it like <laughs> Feature incomplete, or is it is it uh, what two is cores it? only? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, the the big question: like, what does the question really mean? But um, like generally, like whichever way I think about it, I don't think this is going to happen. I don't think. I mean, this is not the vision that we have for Corona to become some kind of a light or limited version of V. -ray. That's definitely not the case, and that is definitely not the idea with which the three of us uh, made the deal. Uh, the, the idea is that Corona will continue in the philosophy with which it has started and with which it made its impact on the market. And that is the direction in which we want to continue the development of Corona. And um, the whole development of the software is just one trade-off after another. Every single time you make a decision, it's a trade-off. Are we going to make it more flexible and it's going to be complicated? Are we going to make it simpler and so on and so on? So for us in Corona, generally, the, the approach that we have been taking is let's try to make things simpler and then let's see if it, if it works all right, okay? Only if, it's, if, you know, if we overdo it and it's too simple, then we can add some extra options for people to be able to, to have more artistic freedom and so on. And this is, this is really the direction in which we want to continue with Corona. And uh, wherever more flexibility and more you know, programmability and so on is needed, this is something that Viray has been doing and it has, has been doing it really well over the years and this is the direction in which Viray will keep going. So, um, so there's, a, there's a difference between the two products and I think it's, it's definitely not the case that one would be a light version of the other. Yeah, I would, I would actually compare the question to a question that would sound like, is a car a light version of a tank? Uh, no. So the uh, thing is, uh, each and every product has its very specific uh, advantages. Each and every product has its own uh, philosophy, and that's why we are having two different products. That's why we are actually competing, because if, if they were the same thing, we actually wouldn't compete. It's just the same thing. So, uh, of course, uh, the, the creative freedom in the development of both products will be still there. And uh, as, as Yaroslav mentioned, uh, both teams have the freedom to, to push it even further based on the philosophy that's been already out there. So, no, it's, it's not one thing based on the other. They're just completely different products, different philosophy, and they're delivering two different things. And the great thing is that you can actually enjoy both. It's okay. Uh, <laughs> 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 it's uh, Andrew from Uniform. And I just wondered, like, going forward, say, like, two, five years, I understand they're going to, obviously, a very similar product, but, but different. And in terms of marketing-wise, is there going to be, uh, like, a, a clear differentiator in the offering? So you're gonna, are you going to say that, one of the renders is like better for certain situations, and in other situations you would use like V-Ray, let's say either interiors, exteriors, animations. Well is it going to be like a clear offer or? Well, I do think that there's already some kind of differentiation. It's not just we will probably not differentiate it by saying this is for the exteriors, this is for the interiors, but the differentiation between the software is okay. Both of them can uh, create nice images. Yeah, mm. that's. That's what they do, and the way how you approach this problem, actually to, uh, to create, to solve this problem, to create uh, the nice images is different in both of the softwares. Well, one covers uh, the, the artist which wants to do it in the easy way, but they are able to sacrifice a bit of flexibility. So if they need some kind of performance, Corona is not able uh, to offer some, uh, some flexibility uh, on that part, but V-Ray is able to do that. So there are different artists which have got a different approaches and both they will pick one of the softwares which they want to use based maybe on the project, may based maybe uh, 
uh, on the camera shop they were actually working and they can just choose whichever one they want to use. So yeah, and, and the great thing is that we are really starting to work on uh, being able to support the same data from both rendering engines so that if you decide to switch, you'll actually be able to right away, like just a setting. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah, but Micro microphone is coming. Be patient. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, it's exciting. What can I say? <laughs> Come on, <laughs> Stefan again. Sorry. So by by this, you mean that it will work somehow, possibly the way also like uh, V-Ray CPU and GPU is working at the moment. Possibly, you know, that you can switch CPU GPU fluently. Is this possible at all? Um, it's. Yeah, that's kind of the intention to some extent. Obviously, if you want the maximum amount of each engine, you would have to use the native features. But if you uh, just need to get an asset from somewhere and it's done with the other engine, you should be able to uh, just press render and get something reasonable out of the way. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> you totally skipped in line, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Fernando from, from Kilora. Um, I'm pretty sure that you are going to develop the best tools ever, so I'm pretty sure of that. But you said that there are 100 and don't know, <coughs> render engines in mm -hmm. the market, but maybe the first one, use, at least in my industry, that is the visualization, and the second one, they are going to join together. Um, I don't know which one is the third one, um, but maybe, I don't know, I want to say 60% of the users are using those tools. So competition has many sides. One is the development, but other side that I think is important is the um, economic one. So um, the guys from Corona were developing a tool that were, was, uh, that is, sorry, really interesting, um, and it's cheap. So the question is, <laughs> how are you going to manage that? So that economic competition you had before your marriage, congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, five guys getting married, congratulations. I don't know even how to reply <laughs> to that. Uh, but yeah, Andre, like, I would, I would actually ask you to answer this question. Do you think that you will actually stop the development of Corona because now we are married? <laughs> <laughs> well, somebody needs to stay home and take care of kids, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, so the thing about competition is that uh, there is now a different kind of competition because we still have the teams. And, you know, when we hire programmers, we can never motivate them with money. And even if somebody ca comes to our office, wants a job, and their only motivation is money, we already know they will not be a good programmer. Because but but I mean, but I mean people from our side, I think, I, I, I mean, s uh, one of the important thing when I'm buying a software is money, I have a budget. So how are you going to manage that between both renders? to have a health competition internally about the money I'm going to spend in your software. You see what I mean? It's, um, are you gonna spend the money? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. It's, it's how, how much are going to cost the things? I think <laughs> maybe V-Ray um, push down the price because your software was cheaper. Maybe not. I don't know. So is this the question is, is, about is the pricing of the products because I'm kind it, of I, I, the, the, the thing is one, of, one of the, the things the competition is the, the is prices. So I, I have to get some software, some interesting software, but with an interesting price. So how you you are going to have a kind of monopoly of those things? I think so I finally got your question. That's like took me a little bit. Sorry. Uh, so what you're asking about is rather. N you're not talking about features and development, but rather I'm about sure the pricing. That 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 the features are going to be great. Okay, so the pricing. Okay, so uh, basically the pricing is going to stay the same for a very long time. When I say very long time, probably at least six, 12 months. 
Uh, <laughs> <laughs> then, if anything changes, it's going to be decided on a completely... It's, it's, it's not about the competition at that point. Fact of the matter is we have teams. We are running business. I know you would enjoy the cheapest prices. I know that. But at the same time, you would never invest into a product that will be bankrupt in a year. So I'm sure you as users would actually like to hear that we are a stable business. In order for us to be a stable business and provide you with the best tools, we got to maintain certain quality and certain prices. It's just part of being part of a business. What's been great about both our products is that they have been both great businesses, not just products. So that being said, if we need to readjust in the future, it's not going to be because we don't have a competition. Trust me, you buy a 3D DCC application, you already got a render. So we are already competing on a very tough market at that point. And it's not about us competing against each other. It's about us now together competing with the rest of the world. So if there's any price changes, it's not going to be because we merged. It's because the world is changing. Thank you. Okay. Okay, so basically, if uh, now with a big budget available and considering V-Ray plugin is available for all, uh, almost all main 3D software package, is Corona also going to be ported to all, uh, all other programs? <laughs> you want to take this? I can answer it. Yeah. Sure. So uh, answer is no. Actually, there's, there's very specific... Uh, Let's put it this way, both products are great in doing what they do. And when we talk about specific DCCs, most of the DCCs are, um, are developed with the purpose of serving specific industries. And sometimes one of the products would serve a much better purpose in a specific industry than the other one. So just having both for the sake of having both is not always the greatest thing because it's spending a lot of resources, just not very efficient. For example, sometimes you would get a smaller DCC, specific industry, specific needs. Sometimes what one product would just be a much better fit than the other. So uh, I think it just makes a very natural kind of sense to have only one product in a specific DCC available. In other cases where you have a very generic use of, of uh, 3D applications, in that case we will definitely have both. But no, we are not planning to have both in each and every DCC available on the planet. No, it's not the purpose. Okay. That being said, the answer is not that Corona will, that there will not be any new DCC into which we will incorporate Corona. But the answer is that for a specific purpose and the specific use, we will choose one, one of the two mm -hmm. and start with that. Mm -hmm. you know, and let's mm -hmm. uh, see what happens. So, yep. Hi, I'm Ares from Factory 15. Um, you were talking about the fact that Corona got twice faster, but w what about V-Ray? Like, which are the features that are going to V-Ray? And the other question is, why you choose to buy Corona and not another uh, uh, another uh, engine? <laughs> like, well, I can answer the second question. It was love at first sight. <laughs> <laughs> So and for the, the, the question is, which was the interest of V-Ray to buy it, it specifically actually, Corona? It was actually our our first step. <laughs> yeah, is that we were looking for partner that uh, that will help us grow to realize some strate strategy goals, and at some point we realized that uh, Chaos Group is really the best match for us. So everybody, of course, thinks that uh, it was the other way around, but it wasn't. Yeah. Actually, we started the whole process. It, I think it, it happened like a year and a half ago or two years ago at the end user event when we already we spent... Had a few beers. Yeah, we right. Well, we had a few beers and then <laughs> I, think, then, uh, I think Vladov and I just decided to offload our ideas. Because before that, we spent some time with the VCs. Uh, you know, the reality is if you've got some product which is, which is good, which is making money, is, uh, it looks like it's kind of, kind of very easy to get the money from VCs. But they were not able to offer really the smart money and experience. They were just looking for the basically financial return. 
and this is not our long-term goal, just to get the investment and then straight away sell the company to the highest bidder, right? So we were really looking for the strategic partner, and as Andre said, uh, Kelt Group is uh, the best partner we could found and wish for. Same DNA. Yeah. So um, to expand on this a little bit, my specific interest in, in working with the Quorum team is that because uh, first they've done an amazing job so far and the rendering is really difficult um, and for a small company because we're a small company compared to other uh, competitors that we have it's really hard and, and uh, working with somebody that shares the same vision and the same uh, fashion um, is really helpful for us to move things forward. There are things that I want to do, but I haven't been able to because uh, it's just uh, either we have to take care of, of features in V-Ray or other things, and just having somebody to bounce ideas with just to discuss things is really helpful. And normally you don't go to your competitor discussing new features <laughs> and how, <laughs> uh, how they will affect the product. But um, now we can do that, and I think it will be it will be really helpful because sometimes you don't know, right? You, you think that something is going to be great and you want to try it out, uh, but it turns out that it might not be such a good idea. But you don't know until you actually implement it into product. And having somebody to just do a reality check on those things is really helpful. Yeah, it's, if I have to put it in a different way, it's very lonely on the top. <laughs> So being able to discuss ideas and share information with someone who actually gets you is very important. Okay, guys, I think that, you know, once we move to a more comfortable and uh, friendly setting out there for food, you're probably going to come up with even more questions. I am pretty sure that you guys are willing to stick around and answer them personally, right? Yeah. So let's g give them a very warm applause and let's... And let's, let's wish them good luck on this new venture. Thank you very much for being here, guys. Thanks, Thanks. a lot. Thanks a lot, guys. Thank you.